Hey guys, International Master Michael Rahal here and I'm going to help you decode the eighth game of the Magnus Carlsen Jan Nepomniachi World Championship match. We're going to try and analyze the game and understand what exactly happened which has, as you will see, allowed the world champion to press forward and become a huge favorite to win this match. So let's dive into the action and with Decode Chess try and analyze and understand what happened in this game. I've already decoded the game. As you can see up the top here there's a, a cool graphic which more or less gives us the idea of how the game went and the, where the turning points were. We're going to use this graphic and the different options to go through the game and try and analyze and understand how Magnus Carlsen was able to defeat Jan Nepomniachi in this game. As you can see, Magnus started with white. Most of the game was slightly better for him, but even so fairly equal. And there seems to be a turning point on move 21 where white's advantage starts to go up and doesn't stop going up until the end of the game. So this already gives us the idea that at no point black Jan Nepomniachi was better in the game and most of the game was uh, very good for, for Magnus. So Magnus opened with e4. And we could go into every explanation move, but we won't do that. We'll use the, the features to uh, focus on the most important moves. Now the knight is attacking the e5 pawn. And let's go forward. Black used, to play, used the Petrov defense which uh, Nepo already used in a previous game of the match, which ended in a draw, the fourth game, I think. On that occasion, Magnus played knight takes e5. This time he deviates and goes for d4, which is the second main line. I actually play this move myself. It's my favorite move. Hitting the pawn on e5 and Jan captures on e4, bishop to d3, attacking the knight, so black played d5, protecting the knight, so a more than enough good move. And so here Magnus captured knight takes e5, knight to d7, and the best continuation is to capture on d7, which is what Magnus did. And here he played a very interesting move because previously in this position, the main move has been to castle, which seems to be a very sensible move, just putting in the king into safety and maybe following up with rook to e1. Knight d2 does have some small differences with, with uh, castling. The main one being that if we castle before playing knight to d2, Black can play bishop to d6, and if we play knight to d2 now, after castling, black can just castle, and the pawn on e4, if captured, this is a forced variation, black would take on h2, check on h4, and recover the bishop with a very sensible position. So that's one of the reasons why Magnus Carlsen played knight to d2 straight away, as far as I understand. Now he's actually threatening the knight on e4. So there was an exchange. Bishop to d6. And here I was expecting during the game that black would castle. But instead of that, he played h5, which uh, the engine in the coaches suggests it could be a good move because it controls the g4 square and does other things. Now let's dig a bit deeper here. And as you can see, we have the new better function, which is explaining the move played in the position, which might not be the same one as the move we suggest in analysis. So for instance, h5 is a good move because it might threaten to play queen h4 by putting some squares under control. But I think castle is an important moment to decode because h5 is a move that many of you might seem a bit, bit strange to move the the pawn where he's going to castle afterwards but if he had played castling 
then Nepomniachi might have had trouble after the move queen to h5, which, as you can see here, threatens to play queen to h7 checkmates and also attacks the pawn on d5. Here, Carson thought quite a while. I suppose he was considering to play c4, which would probably be probably be the, the, the best move to attack the, the center. Maybe even rook to e1 check and then follow up with c4. But as he said after the game, Carlson was uh, very tired in this game. His mind wasn't being able to, he wasn't being able to calculate the variations correctly. So he went for, after 40 minutes, he went for queen to e1, which essentially allows black to play queen to e7, which would be the better move, as we can see by de Koch's explanation, queen to e7 would be better, instead of king to f8. If queen to e7, the queens would have been exchanged I do think that um, black has good chances to hold the game in this position. I actually analyzed the variation. Queen to e7, queen takes queen, king takes queen. And now there is a check here. And although it might seem that black is under in trouble here, in big pressure because of bishop to g5, the threat, if we decode this position, we will see that black does have bishop to f5 which seems to stop most of the threats and leave black with a more or less comfortable position. At least that's the impression I had. We can turn on the computer and effectively, yes, there is a position with approximate equality. If we get to here, the position is about equal and bishop f5 threatens to play bishop to c3, avoids or prevents the checkmate with bishop g5 check and also attacks the bishop on d3. So in this position, after bishop f5, black would have had a decent position. So it seems to me that Nepomniachtchi might have made a mistake around this uh, moment of the game by play playing king to f8 instead of the move um, queen to e7. Now, obviously, he is a very good player. So one must assume that he's calculated this position well. But it seems to me that after bishop b4, which is a very nice move, exchanging dark squares bishops. It seems to me that this position is already slightly better for for white. Not hugely better, but slightly better, because although black seems to have a solid position, his pieces are somewhat decoordinated. The king's not on the best square. He can't put the rook into the center because the pawn on h5 is falling. And actually, We'll decode this position here and the code says there's a big advantage 0 80 which is quite a lot for for a world champion match and different to the first games where Nepomniachtchi did have these type of advances and let them fall through he wasn't able to convert them Magnus is very good at converting these small uh, but stable advantages now as you can see um, C6, which is the move played in the game, is a good move because it protects the pawn on D4, D5. And also, as he's protected the pawn on D5, we can see that here, he gets the chance to play some other moves like Queen to B4 or Queen to G4 at some point. However, we should consider what would have happened if instead of C6, Black would have tried to occupy the file with Rook to E6 which is a reasonable move. And if we dig into this position, we can see that the problem with this move is that the pawn on h5 is falling, it's hanging. And white could capture the pawn. And it, although it seems he loses a piece, there's a check on h8. And white is always better and nearly winning already in this position with... Um, this big advantage of 1.43. So, by playing c6, Jan does defend the pawn on d5. However, his bishop on d7 has less scope now, only one diagonal to perform with, and white is uh, he's pressing here. But I still think that Jan is in the realms of equality. As you can see on the graphic at the top, only 0.51, not so bad and it's very near equality here 
So let's see where he made his mistake. There was an ex a change of rooks on the e-file. Black recaptured, which is a logical move. And white played rook e1, controlling e5 and occupying the, the file. Black played queen f6. And if black was able to exchange queens in these positions, then the game would for sure be equal. Let's say queen takes queen, rook takes queen. And if we decode this position, I'm sure we'll find that the position is quite stable and very, very near what would be a draw because it's essentially symmetrical. And as you can see, the position is about equal. Best play is rook e5. There are other, other decent moves, but uh, the position should be near a draw. We're going to the critical position where we'll use some of the other options of the computer and decode chess, queen e3, bishop d7, h3, a sensible move, creating some luft for the white king, h4, and we're getting near the main position. The next move of Magnus is a very good move, pawn to c4, threatening to capture on d5, and also, after the capture on c4, we can see now that there are some threats for both uh, players. Um, White has weakened slightly his pawn structure by leaving a pawn on d5 isolated. However, he's introduced the threat of playing queen to a3 check and eating the pawn on a7. And also other threats such as queen to b3. However, if black had played queen to d6 here, I think black would have had more or less an equal position. Controlling the center, maybe bringing his rook towards a better square and maintaining uh, a control of the position. I still think white is slightly better, but equality would be very near. However, in this position, black blundered and blundered hard by playing b5. Now, this is a blunder. So we're going to dig deeper into this position. We're going to decode b5 and try and understand why this move was considered a blunder. We can see on the graphic up the top that the score jumps up and from now on just keeps increasing for, for white. So obviously we need to understand why this move is bad. You can already see by the arrows that the suggestion of decode chess is for the queen to go to a3 with the check and capture the pawn on a7. We can see that queen a3 would be good because it forks the pawn on the king, threatens the black pawn on a7 and prevents pawn takes bishop because it's a check and therefore keeps the option of sacrificing f7 at some point. And the decoding is in progress and we can see that already black is under pressure because of this check on a3. And now the pawn on a7 is captured. And the main feature of this combination is that if black captures the bishop on c4, white is able to recover the bishop on d7 with an extra pawn, a very safe king, and a pass pawn on the a file, which at some point may be able to be converted to a queen. So after queen a3 check and queen to a7, black is already in big trouble. Maybe queen d6, which is the suggestion of the code chess, would have been better, supporting the bishop on d7, blocking on f8 to some checks, and allowing the rook to control e6 and maybe transfer to here at some point. Instead of that, queen d8, which was, which was played, which is a slightly more passive move and white was able to keep the bishop on the diagonal because the pawn on d4 is not attacked. Black attacked the pawn with the rook and white protected not only protecting the pawn but also hitting the pawn on h4 in some variations which obviously allows white to control moves such as g6 here which would be a defensive move he can even play rook takes h4 
with no fear of queen takes h4 because of queen b8 picking up the rook on d6. So it seems that the tactics are all working well for for the player with the white pieces, for Magnus. Therefore, black played bishop e6, and de Chess's recommendation here is to exchange an e6, simplify to a better, a very better, a very uh, superior queen ending after queen to c5. Nepomniachi tried to hold the queen ending, but here Magnus played tremendously precise, centralized the queen, as you can see the engine, and de Chess is explaining all these different options. And after a few moves, was able to eliminate the main dangers. Obviously, always with the queen in the center, controlling any chance of perpetual check against the white king, which is the main reason Nepomniachtchi was still playing this game, trying to find a moment to... Here, there was a chance of capturing the pawn. Queen to h4 could have been better. Magnus suggested this in the press conference, that he could have captured the pawn and still win. But there's no reason to avoid losing the two pawns as long as he protects the perpetual check which he does this is a very pre precise move because now there can be a check on f4 but there's no check on e3 c1 or d4 so c3 seems to be and now he's just trying to advance his pawns with the win extreme technique here he's situated the queen behind the d4 pawn which can now advance Black tried a last trick with g4, but the safe move, queen to f3, sealed the win after pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn, and the checks will end very soon with some precise moves, um, helping you understand this um, interesting way of following the games by decoding and using the computer analysis and the wording of decode chess to understand the different options of the game see you soon my friends thank you very much